Here's our next problem. We have a right triangle where one side has a length of 5 and another side has a length of 8. And I'd like you to figure out how big is this angle and how long is this side. Please pause the video and give that a shot. Well, we like to use asterisks to help us focus on the information we were originally given. And I'll also put an asterisk to help me remember which angle I'm focusing on. I wasn't given this angle, but this is the angle I want to focus on because that's what the question was about. And we might as well label the hypotenuse. This side over here now is adjacent to the asterisk. And this horizontal side is opposite to the angle with the asterisk. It's very, uh, very useful to label the angle you're focusing on, on with an asterisk uh, because that tells you which side is adjacent and which side is opposite. If we had chosen to focus on this angle, then this side would have been adjacent and this side would have been opposite. So it's very important to be clear about which angle you're focusing on. An asterisk can help you to f uh, keep remembering which angle you're focusing on. This is another problem where we were given two sides. Well, we know that to find the third side, then we don't need the trig functions. We can just use the Pythagorean theorem. Hypotenuse squared equals length squared plus length squared. We'll write the general formula first and then plug in. The hypotenuse is 8. One of the legs is 5. And the other leg we don't know. 8 squared equals 5 squared plus length squared. Now we can simplify. 8 squared is 64. 5 squared is 25. 64 equals 25 plus the length squared. We have to try to get this length term by itself. Well, we're going to have to get rid of this 25 and get rid of the squaring. But we can't get rid of the 25. Uh, we can't get rid of the squaring until first we've gotten rid of the 25. Um, let me show you why that is. The way to get rid of the squaring is to take the square root of both sides. The way to get rid of the squaring is to take the square root of both sides. But you can see that if you try to take the square root of the right-hand side right now, we're going to have a mess. Uh, because we're going to be having to take the square root of the 25 as well. Uh, and this is not an easy square root to work with. Square roots don't work well over addition. This is not just 5 plus the leg. Um, so you can see that clearly before we take the square root, we have to get rid of the 25. That's going to make our, uh, the problem much easier to work with. So remember what I've written down here is what you would not want to do. This is not a good next step. Uh, it's not good to try to get rid of the square by taking the square root of both sides because then we get a mess on the right hand side. So I'm going to erase this because this would be an unhelpful way to proceed. Instead, let's get rid of the 25 first by doing the opposite. How is the 25 connected to the right-hand side? Well, maybe it would help to put in the sign. This is plus 25, which means that it's really being added to the right-hand side. So the opposite would be to subtract it. If we subtract 25 from the right-hand side, what's left? Just this term. But then the golden rule of algebra says that we must also subtract 25 from the left-hand side. So we have to do 64 minus 25, which is 39. Don't add 25 here, subtract it. Now we can get rid of the square by taking the square root of both sides. What do you have if you take the square root of this side? You just get the length term by itself. And we have to take the positive square root of 39. So the leg is the square root of 39. Uh, you could just leave the answer like this, or you could use your calculator to make that into a decimal. Square root of 39 is approximately 6.2. Well, when we figure something out, we should build it into our sketch. 6.2. Well, we've answered the, one of the questions. We found out how long this leg was. Uh, now, our other question was to figure out how big this angle is. What information are we going to use to figure out this angle? Well, theoretically, we could use this 6.2. 
but conventionally, people would rather use the numbers they were originally given, which we've marked with the asterisks. So we're going to try to use the 8 and the 5 to figure out how big the angle is. How can we use the 8 and the 5? Well, those represent the opposite side and the hypotenuse. The opposite side and the hypotenuse were, were, were the numbers we were originally given. So what trig function should we use that involves the opposite and the hypotenuse? I hope that was easy for you. That's the sine that involves the opposite and the hypotenuse. So, so we have to take the sine. Well, uh -oh, the sine of what? We better give this angle a name. Let's call it theta. The sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. We don't plug in for theta because we don't know it, but we can plug in for the opposite side, that's 5. And we can plug in for the hypotenuse, that's 8. If you wanted to, you could do this division right now, but uh, let's postpone that. Now we just have to get the theta by itself by removing the sine function. The way to remove something is to do the opposite. Well, what do you think is the opposite of a sine function? Uh, well, I hope you were able to figure that out, even though we haven't explicitly talked about that yet. Because you already know the opposite of a tangent is an inverse tangent. And the opposite of a cosine is an inverse cosine. So I hope it doesn't blow your mind to hear that the, inver uh, the inverse of a sine, uh, the opposite of a sine, is an inverse sine. So we need to take the inverse sine of both sides of this equation. Well, what are we going to have left if we take the inverse sine of the left-hand side? Well, the, the inverse sine is going to cancel out the sine function and all we have left is theta. But the golden rule of algebra says that if we take the inverse sine of the left, we must take the inverse sine of the right-hand side. These are two ways to write that. You could say theta is the inverse sine of 5 eighths, or you could say theta is the arc sine of 5 eighths. Those mean the same thing. So now we have to get our calculator and take the inverse sine of 5 eighths. On a TI-83 or 84 calculator, you would hit second, then you hit the sine button, which gives you the inverse sine. Um, then the calculator would put this parenthesis in for you. Then you would type 5 divided by 8, right parenthesis, and then enter. It's similar in other calculators. If your calculator does not put the left parenthesis in, you have to do that yourself because we're taking uh, the, the thing that we're taking the sine of has two parts, and we need to tell the calculator that both of these are part of the sine. So hopefully you were able to accomplish that, and you found that the inverse sine was 39 degrees. approximately. That angle is 39 degrees. This was another problem where we were given the hypotenuse and one leg. And as I previously mentioned, this is actually a little bit of a, a pretty rare type of question in physics. Usually you're not given the hypotenuse and one leg. Usually you're given two legs. But even though this is rare, you really would be expected to know how to deal with this if it did pop up in physics. So I thought we would do an example like this. Um, now, so we, now we've done problems where sometimes we ended up using the inverse tangent, sometimes we ended up using the inverse sine, and sometimes we ended up using the inverse cosine. Well, I hope that you're not just trying to memorize when to use each one. It should be pretty clear from the logic of the problems which one you're going to use. On this problem, Remember that the asterisks indicate the information we were originally given. On this problem, we were given the opposite side and the hypotenuse. Uh, so it made sense to use the sine and the inverse sine. Uh, on the previous problem, we were given the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. So it made sense to use the cosine and the inverse cosine. Um, and on most problems of this type, on most problems of this type, you're going to be given two legs. Uh, and the two legs, uh, obviously, are not the hypotenuse. So if you're given two legs, you're given the opposite side and the adjacent side. On most physics problems where you're given two sides, you're given two legs, the opposite and the adjacent. Well, if you're given opposite and adjacent, then it's just common sense that we have to use the tangent and the inverse tangent, toe.